Hi all, this is Karthik from Design School by WP Algorithm, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your WordPress websites. If you are new here, consider subscribing. Let's get into today's video. In this video, I'll show you how to make elementary sections, columns or basically widgets clickable. So when you click on them, they can either open a pop-up, they can open up a light box and more. There are two easy ways to do this. In this video, I'll show you how I already made a video on how to make elementary section, column or a widget clickable, but that's for one section, one particular column or one particular widget on that page. In this video, I'll also show you how to do that for multiple sections, multiple columns and more. So the first method is to install a plugin called clickable elementor column. So search for column and clickable or clickable elementor. It's a plugin. It's a free plugin that you can download and install from WordPress repository. It's this one. So it's make column clickable elementor plugin. Just click on install and activate it. So once you install and activate that make column clickable elementor plugin, if you have any elementor page post or template open, you can simply refresh it or reload it, or you can simply open up a new page post or a template using edit with elementor in your elementor interface. Now when you click on a column, you now have a new field called column link. From here, you can simply enter your URL. So let me enter some URL here. It can be a link on any other website or something on your own website. I just entered a random URL here for this particular column. Click on update. You can preview the changes by clicking on this eye icon. And once the page loads up, you now can see that when I hover over this column, the cursor turns to a hand and when I click on it, it'll open up the URL specified in this particular column link. So it's that easy to make a column clickable with the help of this plugin and not just any URL that you can enter. You can also click on link options. You can also have an option to open it in new window. So the same URL, you can also make it open in a new, win new window. And if you want to have a new follow, basically when you're adding some references, you usually do this in SEO. We'll discuss that later in WP algorithm videos. So you can also open it in new window, click on this or I'll open up the preview page again. Now when the preview page loads, when I click on it, the link opens in a new tab. If you have Elementor Pro, you can also link it to site URL, which will open up your website, F featured image. You can also open up a light box. Let's actually do that. So let's open up an image when we uh, actually click on this particular column. I'll choose a random image. I'll update it. And let's see how that looks like. So when I click on this column, a light box is opened. Cool, right? You can also link it to a pop up and a lot more. But this method or this particular plugin says what it does. So it will just make your column clickable and the links can be anything from your site. It can be a light box. It can be a pop up. So all that can be done using this. So that's method one using a plugin. There is another way to do this. This is actually the same method that was discussed in an earlier video. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So you'll essentially drag in HTML widget of Elementor. It's this one, not this one. So click and drag it. And here you just put the code and modify few things that I'll show you right now. In the previous video, I explained it how to do it on a single column. In this video, I'll show you how to tweak it to make all the columns clickable or basically as many columns clickable as you want. It can be applied to column section or a widget as well. So it doesn't matter. So once you drag in the HTML widget, make sure you copy and paste the code that I share with you in the comment. And one more thing to note here, when you drag in your HTML widget, you may get a 403 error here. That's because of your WordFence security plugin. You can temporarily disable it, complete the process and turn it back on. And whenever you're working with this template again, it might throw up a 403 error. So whenever you want to change the template that this particular widget is in, you might have to temporarily disable it. WordFence, it's not a big deal. Just disable it, put all the code. Essentially, it thinks that someone is trying to put some code and inject some code into your website, but it's actually you who's putting this code. This is JavaScript based on the security preferences. It might block the functionality. Anyway, temporarily disable it, get work done, turn it back on. I'll also tell you another way to do this even in a better way. 
But for now, once you drag in the widget, the code here essentially gets the element that has an ID of clickable. So you click on any column, section or a widget and under CSS ID under advanced, put the same ID. I'll show you how to do that for multiple columns. So once you put the clickable ID here, instead of this URL, you need to put your own URL. So here, let's see. I'll just change this URL to apple.com. Click on it. And if you change this to self, it becomes really hard for you to edit this because whenever you click on this column, it will open up in the same page. So instead of underscore blank, if you put underscore self, the link will open up in the same page. And that also applies to Elementor preview page as well. So I highly recommend you put underscore blank here. Since we've put the clickable ID into this column and change the link, you can see when I click on this particular column, it opens up a link just like that. So it's that easy. So what if you want to make column three clickable and open up a maybe new link. So click on the column. Let's call this ID clickable two. And under this, the thing that you need to change, you just need to copy and paste everything from here till here, everything in between the script tags, copy it, paste it. And here, instead of clickable, you need to replace it with the new ID. And here you also need to change the function name. So you have to change the name of the function from my function to my function two. Also that should be applied here. Here you can put a new link. I'll put wpexperimenter.com. So now when I click on this column, it opens up wpexperimenter.com. When I click on this, it opens up apple.com. So people have been asking me how to make multiple columns clickable. The thing is simple. You duplicate this snippet of code and change the ID. Also the function name, which has to be changed here and here. And under URL, you can put any URL that you want this column to open. This method is actually applicable to sections as well. I'll just open up or create a new section. So what if you want to make this section open a new link? Just click on the section. And remember this CSS ID has to be unique for each and every element on the page. So you cannot use clickable, clickable one, clickable two, or whatever you've used so far. So we've used clickable and clickable two here. So we'll call this section clickable three. It's easier to do it this way just by changing the number so that you'll remember how to use it. Now you go back to your code. Like I said, you have to duplicate this snippet of code, copy it, paste it. And here you have to change the ID first, which is our clickable three function name from my function two to my function three. Again, that name has to be changed here. And here we'll just open up a uh, cnet.com that's a famous tech review website so now when i click on this section you can see that this section actually opens up cnet.com in a new link you can change this to anything and the number of sections you want you replicate this procedure and every time you do this if you're using word fence you might get a 403 error so in order to do this whole process you might have to temporarily disable WordFence plugin and put all the code and do what you want in the code here first and then you can reactivate your WordFence. But if you don't want to always deactivate your WordFence and reactivate it back while doing this process, there's also another way to do this. It's by using unlimited elements add-on. So you can install unlimited elements add-on, put this code without the script tags all the code in between into the JavaScript area of the widget. So I've explained widget creator of unlimited elements add-on. I'll show you that in a bit. So once you install and activate unlimited elements for Elementor add-on, just click on any collection, click on add widget. And this widget is all about making elements clickable. 
So I'll call it clickable elements. Once you type the title, the name will be autofilled from what you type in the title. I've shown this in the widget created tutorial. I'll leave a link to that. You can either click on this or double click on this to enter the actual code. So here you can enter your HTML, CSS and JavaScript. All we need is JavaScript for this widget. Let us delete the HTML and JavaScript. Without the script tags, you just copy everything in between. Copy and let's put it into this widget. Let's click on update. It's updated. Now this clickable elements will be available as a draggable widget within Elementor interface. So I'll actually delete this particular section which contains the HTML widget of Elementor. I'll click on update. I'll refresh this page or you can open up a new page so that the unlimited elements add-on widget that we just created will show up. So once the page is refreshed, you can now see that when I click on the column, nothing happens. That's because I've removed the HTML widget. Now we can simply drag the clickable elements widget and it works just as before. And if you have this particular unlimited element add-on widget, you won't get any 403 error. You can work peacefully. You can change or add links to as many columns, sections or basically any element you want. It's that easy. All the code that we have, now we have all that code within this particular unlimited elements add-on. If you don't want, you can also deactivate this particular widget. So once you go back to the widgets list in unlimited elements add-on, when you don't want these columns to be a clickable links, it's quite easily reversible. All you need to do is to remove the section that has the unlimited elements add-on, which is having all the code responsible for making these columns and sections clickable. Clear the cache and refresh the page once, flush out the cache from your CDN. So now it's updated and when I click on the columns, nothing happens because we have removed the widget which was responsible for all that. And for those of you who want the explanation about the code, essentially when you click on an element with an ID, we are activating a function. So function is similar to a task in JavaScript. So what we specify in this function is what happens when you click on this element. So when I click on clickable, I'm saying window.open. So it'll open up a new window. Basically JavaScript speaks to your browser. HTML, CSS and JavaScript are all understood by your browser and processed by your browser. So the JavaScript code will tell your browser to open a new window or new link with this URL and in a new tab. If you have self here, it'll open up in the same page itself. So underscore self, will open up the link in the same page, but it's always better to have underscore blank. And here you're specifying the URL that need to be opened when you click on it. Similarly, when you click on clickable to element, you're activating another function. Or if you want to open up the same link, here you can simply say my function. So even when you click on clickable to, it'll activate or do the task specified here, which is opening up apple.com. But if you want a different link, call it a different function and change the URL here and clickable 2 will open this URL. Similarly, clickable 3 will open up a different URL. And these clickable IDs can be applied to anything within your Elementor interface. So it can be applied to your progress bar widget, anything with advanced tab. So here you can put clickable for this as well. So anything can be made clickable just by using these two methods. The first plugin method just uses the columns. So it can only make clickable columns using this method by putting the little bit of code that I showed you and tweaking it. You can make basically any element on your page clickable. That's it for now. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'll talk to you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.